Hey guys, this is Sarah. This is my very first tag video. As I was watching one of my very favorite YouTubers, Elizabeth Madero, and at the end of her recent video where she did a tag, she tagged me specifically. So thank you, Elizabeth. I hope you're watching. Elizabeth, if you're watching, I just want you to know that you have been such an inspiration to me in starting my own YouTube channel. I've really, really enjoyed your channel and all of your tips and information about health and wellness and Young Living products. Thank you for tagging me. If you are watching my channel right now and you don't know about Elizabeth Madero's YouTube channel, you gotta get over there quick. I will put the link down below, take a look at her channel. This is a 13 questions tag. And I'll go ahead and put the 13 questions down below. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. The first question is, what do you order at Starbucks? Honestly, I don't go to Starbucks as much as I used to. I'm really trying to be diligent about eating clean and healthy, but I am not perfect, please. And when I am not following a really strict regimen, what I like to get are the refreshers. And they have a good amount of sugar, so if you're trying to eat clean, you really should watch them. They have a Starbucks in our Target, which is really close to our house, so when I do a Target run, that's the time that I usually get a refresher on my way out. They added a new refresher to the menu. It's strawberry acai refresher and it is my favorite so I'll usually do a tall every once in a while if I'm gonna splurge I'll do a grande and that's what I tend to get if I'm on a road trip and I can't find a healthier place to eat and haven't packed my lunch I'll get their protein box there too that's another thing I order there that has like apples grapes peanut butter hard-boiled egg that's really yummy so yay Starbucks I gotta go a lot faster I'm never gonna finish these questions all right, question number two. What is one thing in your closet you can't live without? I would say that a good pair of shoes is what I love in my closet. And right now in the summer, I actually have a pair of flip-flops that I'm wearing nonstop, and I'll show them to you. I just took this off my foot. This is a Teva flip-flop, and it's got teal colors and blue colors, if you can see there. I'm a huge fan of teal and blue. If you look in my closet, almost all of my clothes are that color. <laughs> if you could see my skirt right now, you would see I'm actually wearing a teal colored skirt with my um, t-shirt. If it's fall or winter, I have a really comfortable pair of Keen shoes. You know, you hikers out there, it's K-E-E-N, and I love them. When we went to Europe a couple years ago, I trekked all over the place in them, and so once it gets cooler, I will probably live in those the rest of the year, since we're in Texas and it's warm. Love me a good pair of shoes. All right, question three. What's one thing most people wouldn't know about you? Hmm. The first thing that comes to mind is I am actually ambidextrous, which if you don't know what that term means, it means that I can write with my left hand and my right hand. I am primarily left-handed and that's the hand I've written with my whole life. I realized I was ambidextrous as a child because uh, I could write really well on the chalkboard with my right hand when all the other kids would like go to write with their non-dominant hand and couldn't write. And I thought, oh, that's interesting, and I never used it. And then a couple of years ago, I actually started developing carpal tunnel a little bit in my left hand. And so I just decided on a whim. I don't even know what made me decide to do it. I started writing with my right hand, and I started practicing when I was journaling. And now I only write with my right hand. I very rarely, if ever, write with my left. So it's kind of crazy, but I guess that's just uh, how it goes when you can write with both hands. So quirky little thing that I probably don't tell a lot of people, but now I've told a lot because it's on YouTube. All right, okay, on to question four. Name one thing you want to do before you die. Ooh, that's a loaded one. Um, as you can see, I am a little bit indecisive, but in this particular question, I am going to share two things. I would absolutely love to be a mother. I have been married to my husband for a handful of years, and right now we have a puppy dog, so yes, I am a mom to my dog, and yes, she's my kid, I love her. She's a rescue that I adopted when I was working at a veterinary clinic a handful of years ago, but I would love to be a mom, so whether that's having my own child or adopting, we'll just see uh, what God's plans are for us, but that is something I would love to do. And the other thing I would love to do is something I've done but I want to continue to do is to travel the world. If you watched Elizabeth's tag video she talked about that. Elizabeth I'm totally with you. Um, I've traveled a little bit overseas um, performing and I went to Europe uh, on a wonderful trip with my husband a couple of years ago and that is a big 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 dream of mine. If I could I would probably travel professionally for a living again. I love it and I miss it. So I do want to go all around the world and see as much of this planet as I absolutely can. Question number five, what's one food you can't live without? One food? You're asking a foodie to give you one food? Ooh, that's hard. <laughs> um, I wrote down a couple things. I love pizza 
and I love salad, but not just like a plain old salad with like icky lettuce or bad salad dressings. I love like a gourmet salad with like bib lettuce or butter lettuce with a whole bunch of yummy vegetables and homemade salad dressing, maybe some goat cheese, maybe some bacon. Like I like a good salad. So I think I would probably go with either pizza or salad. It depends. Um, just because I wanna stay healthy, I should probably make my answer salad. But again, it has to be a really, really yummy one. Number six, what phrase do you live by? Um, I will share the phrase that my godmother has uh, shared with me multiple times and it's just been so encouraging and uplifting to me. Stay the course. If you're going through a hard time, if you're not, if you're going through just the everyday of uh, uh, doldrums. Um, I have learned that that phrase has stayed with me and helped me through a lot of times uh, when the going gets tough or when you're just waiting for the next thing. I always remember to stay the course in my life. So that's what I would say. Number seven, what do you like slash dislike about the YouTube community? Well, for me, I'm pretty new to the YouTube community and I have been really thrilled with the welcoming nature of getting to interact with people in the comments. I am also a blogger and have been a blogger for a long time, but I am finding that YouTube comes a little bit more natural to me. I love writing and it's definitely something that's very much a part of my heart and part of what I love to do as a creative person, but I take a long time to write. Like, it takes me a long time to write posts. So while I love writing and blogging, I'm continuing to do that. I'm a talker, I can't help it, it's who I am. <laughs> you can tell from my videos. It's really good that there's an edit function. What I enjoy is the ability YouTube gives you to share things you love, to share inspiration, to share creativity, and do it rather quickly, and then put it up in an environment where everyone else can learn from that. And so that's been really awesome for me. I feel like I've learned a lot of interesting things on YouTube that I didn't expect. I was really wary of YouTube. I used to just watch videos for a very, very long time, and I didn't start making videos until this year. But I learned a lot of things that I didn't expect to find on YouTube. I love the community. Um, please keep commenting in my uh, comments below. I love to interact with people that watch my channel, and I love to chat with people on other people's YouTube channels that I really enjoy. I don't have a lot of negative right now, but I have heard there can be a lot of haters and a lot of negativity, but I think that happens anywhere you are. Um, I just really think that that's par for the course, unfortunately, and nobody likes that. None of us have time for that, right? And um, I definitely don't like it when people do a thumbs down. Uh, one of my very first videos, I had like one or two thumbs down and I was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? Is it just like the worst video ever? <laughs> and I didn't think that that would bother me, but it did. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, if you're gonna not like the video, don't bother putting a thumbs down on it. Just is depressing and maybe hurtful to the person making the video. You can just move on and uh, not comment, not do any sort of thumb at all if you don't like it. So I say either give a thumbs up or move on. That's my philosophy. But I have not had very much of that. I'm really grateful for that. And I really think YouTube is a positive, great place. So that's um, how I feel about it now. I'm taking too long on these questions. Question eight, most listened to song on iTunes. I looked on my uh, phone and on my computer. I tried to figure out how to see my most used song, but I didn't really know. Because I'm very much a music person. I'm a singer. I play piano, I'm a musician. And so I'm always listening to music. And I would say this summer, the most listened to song is probably Oh Mama by Joy Williams, who used to be a part of the duo Civil Wars before they broke up. And uh, even before that, she was a contemporary Christian singer and she has now gone on and done a solo record. The solo record is called Venus. Again, it's Joy Williams and the song is amazing. I listen to it all the time on my workout playlist. Check it out. And other than that, I would say in general, like always most listened to for me is anything by Sting. I love him. He is wonderful. So pretty much either that song or any song by Sting. That's what I'm going to go with. Question nine. What kind of style would you describe yourself having? I don't really consider myself very stylish. Like I got these earrings from Noonday just on a whim because someone said they thought they would be cute. I clearly had no fashion sense about it and I wore them and every time I wore them people enjoyed them but it wasn't because I was intentionally knowing what I was doing. It was completely accidental. So I feel like if I'm ever stylish, it's because someone else helped me or it was a happy accident, or as I like to say, a godsidence. I would say that my general style is very comfortable and I want the clothes, the fabric that I'm in to feel soft and comfortable. I'm much rather gonna choose uh, comfort over like high fashion, that's just me. Um, but I would say my style is uh, comfortable, simple. Question 10. 
The shortest one I can tell you, what is my favorite number? That's very easy, that would be seven. It is a biblical number and that's why it's my favorite. Okay, number 11. Two favorite hobbies. Again, hard for me to choose one or two hobbies. I would say reading is a big, big hobby for me. I'm a voracious reader. I'm usually reading four or five books at once. I would say that blogging is a hobby, and it definitely is, but I'm not doing as much vlogging now as I am YouTubing. I am still blogging. I love being on author launch teams, and it is a dream of mine to write a book, so that is definitely something I need to continue investing my energies in, but I kind of put them together, like YouTube and blogging, vlogging, blogging, for me kind of go hand in hand. I hate to say this because performing in musical theater and singing has been my profession for many, many years, but I'm not in a position where I'm doing it a lot professionally now, and that makes me really sad because it's something I really love. But I don't live on the East Coast now. I live in a city in the Midwest. I would say that it's a hobby because I don't do it a lot, but you know what? I think I'm not. I'm still going to count it as one of my passions, one of the things that I feel is my calling that I was put on this earth to do. Um, I really love performing, um, singing, acting, and doing musical theater. I will do it here and there when uh, God gives me those opportunities. And I'm really thrilled to be doing it right now in a production of Mary Poppins this week. Number 12, what are your two pet peeves? I will keep it to two here, I promise. My first pet peeve is manipulative people. I cannot stand that. I don't like it when somebody pretends to be something that they're not. I just don't think that's helpful to anyone. And let's see, what's another pet peeve of mine? Oh, this is so random, but my husband and my friends tease me about it. If I'm eating or drinking something and something dribbles down like the side of my mouth, for whatever reason, if I like, you know, drink something or food gets on the side of my face or my mouth, it drives me nuts. I hate it. I have to wipe it off immediately. I don't know where it came from. It's been years. It's a quirky thing. What can I say? But it drives me crazy. I don't like the dribbles. I don't know. That's what I got. <laughs> All right, and my last question, what is a guilty pleasure? All right, I even brought it in here because I have to own up to it. I love sweets. I have been doing my best to cut down my sugar. I know I need to be sugar-free. I'm working on that. My favorite guilty pleasure, look at that bad boy, guys. Yummy. That is a dark chocolate peanut butter cup from Trader Joe's. It is delicious. I would say Reese's peanut butter cups are a guilty pleasure and I do love them, but I try to have these because they're even more delicious. Hope you liked this tag video. I don't have a lot of specific YouTubers that I can tag. Um, I have a handful of YouTubers that I watch regularly that have huge followings, so to tag them, I don't even know that they're even gonna know who I am. I'm like a gnat in the YouTube community. Um, but that's okay, I'm just starting out. This is new, this is great. I know Elizabeth already tagged someone that I talk with a lot on my channel, the Gable family. Um, I think she's already tagged you, but just in case, I would tag her. I do wanna tag a YouTuber that I have subscribed to. I don't know how often he does videos. It's called It's Tyler Duh. His name is Tyler and he's hilarious. And he doesn't do videos very often, but when he does, I watch them and they're awesome. And so I subscribe to his channel. So Tyler, I'm gonna tag you. If you are watching this video and you are a YouTuber and you would like to do a tag video, consider yourself tagged. Whether or not I named anyone specifically, if you feel like doing this tag video, go ahead and do it. Let me know in the comments so I can watch yours and cheer you on too. Like this video if you like it. Again, we like the thumbs ups and that's about it. I would either thumbs up or nothing. <laughs> if you liked it, I'd really love if you would give me a thumbs up and or subscribe to my channel so you can come along with me on my journey. This tag was fun. So I hope all of you guys are doing great on the other side of that screen and having a wonderful end to your summer. I'll be back at you later with another video. Have a great day. Bye guys.